Next up on One Soccer Today, presented by CIBC, we are heading to Perth, Australia to discuss the Women's World Cup. It is just the second match of the group, and yet for many, it feels like a must-win game for Canada, at least if they want any amount of control over where they will finish in this group, understanding that as soon as they're done full-time against Ireland, they're heading straight back, and they'll be finishing the group stage off in Australia against Australia. But one match at a time, they get their point. Lots of disappointment and some concerns over fitness as Jesse Fleming did not play a single minute. Deanne Rose, who started, Michelle Prince, who had a cup of coffee, both look miles off their form, which is to be expected after the insanely major injuries that they had before the World Cup. But now you're starting to wonder... Is Canada going to be able to survive this group, let alone get out of this group? Ashley Lawrence almost had her leg snapped in half by a tackle that I'm surprised she was able to walk away from afterwards in a VAR red card. And now we're wondering as well about Jesse Fleming. Is she, was she sat for the first game precautionary? Is she going to be able to get any minutes? You'd be surprised to see her start the game, but maybe some minutes off the bench. Lots there, Ollie. Let's start with Fleming though, because she seems like the one based on the players that Bev Priest has in camp that they miss the most and as soon as she's possibly able to play they need her to get some ingenuity fluidity and competency into this attack they do need her but like the question is if she wasn't ready to play any part in the opening game of the tournament a few days later how ready is she going to be yeah. um, like you said i would lean on the side of it's hard to expect her to, to be fit to start if that was her status in the first game going into the second game so this, I think, is, is going to be a really interesting game to see what team Beth Priestman picks here because I think she's got a big decision to make and maybe she'll land somewhere in the middle rather than at one extreme or the other. But I think on the outside, when you, if you ask a lot of fans, what a lot of people would would like to see is, is wholesale changes to this attack. And players like Evelyn Vienne and Chloe Lacasse being brought in and given a real opportunity at a World Cup. What I think is more likely is if is Bev Priestman gives the players that she knows that she's had for a long time, that are kind of more experienced Canada players, uh, a second second bite of the apple here to, to try and win this game and, and put themselves back in control of this group. So which way she leans, again, if there's a bit of a, 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 bit of a mixture between both kind of groups of, of players, the way I'm classifying them there, um, that I think is, is a big call for Priestman here because she simply did not get enough out of Heitema, out of Rose, out of a number of players, to be honest, in that first game. Yeah, I I look at things a little bit differently. It's very hard for me to assess the play of the attacking players when they lose the one player that can provide genuine service from the middle of the park to the attacking players, and that's through Jesse Fleming. After Fleming, you know, Quinn, Grosso, they play a role. It's much more lateral. It's just kind of controlling the game. But in terms of providing cutting edge, a player that can come through the middle of the park and drive the team forward, there's only one of them in this group. Uh, at least one of them that's in contend contention to start right now, and that seemingly is Jesse Fleming. Take her out of the team. I, I just don't think the attack had no anywhere near enough service. Yeah, there, there was moments that broke down for Nigeria at the back, and they tried to gift Canada moments. And Canada were nowhere near clinical enough. And that includes Evelyn Vienne and Chloe Lacasse, two players. I commend them for their hard running, but two players that each were on the ball in the three-on-one opportunity and failed to pass and made the wrong decision in that moment. So uh, I think there is some players in the attack, but it's the way that this team connects that's all important. For me, if Ashley Lawrence can play, and we'll see if her, how her leg's doing after that tackle... I've always subscribed. You want your better players when you're playing against teams that are going to sit back against you. You want them higher up the field. For me, Lawrence was a complete waste playing left back in that game. She could play further up in the midfield and provide a little bit, a little bit more because she's Canada's best player. She's incredible. She's one of the best um, players in world football for my money, whether it's at her, uh, you know, at the fullback position or in the midfield. So I, I just don't think that you need her there. You need her further up the field. I don't think we'll see it because there's no evidence to suggest that we will, but that, that that's kind of where, where my mind goes. For me, it's no Fleming, no party for this Canada team, and they're really going to struggle to create if it's not from a set piece or a penalty or, or a self-inflicted wound by the opponent. And if they get a penalty, they have to start scoring them 
and no disrespect to Christine Sinclair, but that's just, that's the World Cup. That's exactly what this tournament. tournament needs. Clinical finishing. And it's more than just clinical finishing. For a lot of supporters, it's when they get in the attacking third, look brave. Look like you know what you want to do on the ball. Be dangerous in that sense. And that's one of the reasons why this team right now, three matches without a win, only one win in their last six. Yes, you got the point. The point is very important. The point was the absolute bare minimum against Nigeria for this team and the expectations that they set for themselves when they keep reminding the media and the supporters as players that they feel disrespected, not talked about enough. And yeah, they're the Olympic champions. And that's important because it's an accomplishment you can never take away from them. But if they don't want this to be the same old story with the World Cup, and that's not even making a match for a medal, things need to change. Things need to get more aggressive quickly. Yeah. And and Ollie, I know this is like this is up to Bev, and I'm sure Bev is the one who's not sleeping and going through all these scenarios and what should I do, what's gonna work, what gives us the best chance. If you are in her shoes, are you running back Heidemann Leon up front, or do you tinker with that? Obviously, Gareth just mentioned Vienne and Lacasse. Yeah, it's, it's always been a tough one with Canada because I think you know there has certainly been a justified appetite to see some fresher faces come in. Um, I don't think you can say it in that first game or for a sustained period, to be honest, that Jordan Heitzmer is really um, convinced as, as Canada's number nine. No, she looked better on but the wing than the nine. Potentially, yeah. But then the, you look at like, who are the options to come in? Like, I think VN has had some bright moments for Canada, um, but starting a game is, is, is a different matter. And, you know, you've got to, and, and we don't see how they train, but that's part of it, obviously, when, when, when it comes to selection. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's, personnel at this point so much as I think Bev Priestman is a really good coach and I think there are certain things quite like John Herdman that she is particularly good at organization of the team defensive solidity the tactical principles sometimes I feel like they could take the shackles off a little bit in attack I, I, I saw too many players I felt in that first game who were kind of on the ball in decent positions in the middle third and the final third and just like overthinking and thinking like what should we do in this situation? What have we been coached to do rather than playing with some freedom, making some decisions yourself, like really empowering the players in that, in that way to take charge of the game. Um, so I'd, I'd like to see a bit more freedom in that regard to given to the team in a match like this. I, I just don't think it's in their MO. Look, Canada are a pain in to play against. If you were any other team in this tournament, you don't want to play against Canada because they're difficult to break down. But Canada is a team that struggles to win games as well. So I think you can be both things. And I think that against the better teams in this tournament, Canada will look better because it can stay in a low block. They have their two holding midfielders who yeah. are good at controlling the game, playing out of the back, but, and, 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 and they're decent in transition. They're a lot like the men's team in that way. A lot of the attacks come down the flanks better in transition than anything else. Um, and when they need to go and dictate against an inferior side, like Nigeria, they just struggle to convince. So, I think that now it's just about mere survival. Get out of this group. And once you start playing some of the, the bigger and better teams that will be on the ball more in this tournament, I think it suits Canada. So all is not lost. It lost here. Um, but the injuries really complicate things. Is Buchanan well enough to play? She's sick. Good thing you're deep at center back. You're okay there. But Fleming and Lawrence are legitimate concerns. And if those two players um are short-term even longer-term doubts then it really kind of sours on how you feel about this Canada team at this world cup and if you want to see dan rose find a bit more form leon more form fleming maybe a start they have to go deep it's as simple as that and the republic of ireland are going to make this a miserable game for the canadians and mccabe you don't have to look any further than her these are her types of game this this screams alicia chapman for me i cannot wait to see alicia chapman get stuck into a tackle in this game 